Hello everyone, today we are doing a new room from TryHackMe that is ByteMe. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's run our NWEB scan on the target host. So we're gonna say a scan dash A is to specify the IP of the target. Then dash dash U limit is to specify basically the speed of the scan that is 5000 by default. Then whatever you specify after these double dashes will, will be passed on to the NMAP after dress scan identifies the uh, ports open. So I'm going to say dash A, that is for aggressive scan. Dash ON is to output the NMAP results into the normal text file, that is named dress scan all dot txt. I have already run the scan, so let's take a look at the results here. In the results, we can see port 22 is open here for SSH and then port 80, uh, that is running HTTP server apache uh, of version 2.4.49 and it also says ubuntu so uh, these are the two ports open on the target machine uh, quickly we can check if there is any public exploit available of apache 2.4.49 so i'm going to say such exploit apache 2.4.29 actually it's and press enter here we can see there's no exploit available for 2.4.49 uh, sorry 2.9 so we'll move on so let's browse over to port 80 quickly on our, our web browser. So here we can see uh, we have only Apache 2 default the page and nothing special here. So let's, let's copy the URL and then let's go and run a GoBuster scan here. So I'm going to say GoBuster and then DIR to specify that we are going to actually brute force the dash U to specify URL of the target. Then dash W to specify the word list. So I'm going to say user share word list directory okay directory is 2.3 medium and I, I always do uh, like using php html and txt extensions to find uh, all the files uh, that we can that are, that are ending with a php html and txt and then specify the threads nearby 260 and i have already run this scan and uh, just for the sake of time to save for saving some time i have already run this scan and save the results in the gobuster 85 so let's take a look at the contents. Here we can see that console is open on the target machine. So let's go here. And uh, let's see what we have here. Here we are redirected to a, a login page. That says please sign in. Okay, so whenever I say this, I always try for the SQL injection, basic SQL injection payload. That is this. And let's fill in the captcha and let's see if this works. Press enter and we can see it says incorrect details. We can try some passwords like uh, oops uh, like admin admin or admin password uh, something like that and uh, let's try if this password works and we can say it says mm, incorrect details so it's not working let's check out what our web browser says it says uh, we are using php and then apache 2.0.29 that is we know and also bootstrap and we are on the index of php page right now let's see if uh, we have robots.txt file I always uh, like to check it in, inside every directory and we can see we have it but we do not have any directory listed here so there's nothing interesting here and let's set up the page okay so let's check out the source code of this page and here we can see that we have a script here and the function named handle submit and also we can see here it is using console security image and play.php file so security image is a um, i think it's uh, using security image to load the captchas so we can quickly search for like security image like what it is and we can see that a security image is a php capture is open source free php capture script for generating complex images and capture codes to protect forms from spam and abuse potentially from brute force attacks so let's see if we can uh, directly list the contents let's remove the view source uh, okay so let's remove this oops yeah so we are inside the index of console security image and here we have some files here uh, we cannot see any php files because they get executed so we have a composer.json here let's see it and here we can see that it's a security image capture library uh, here we are looking for a version number uh, to see if we can uh, get any version number or any, or any potential leaks that can help us exploit this application so there's a readme.txt file let's see it 
here we can see the version being used here is 3.6.8 okay also we are given uh, the link to the uh, github repo uh, of the query image so let's go here and check out the latest version in use and let's see so these are the releases here let's click here and uh, we're not given a version number here but we can see the latest release was on may 30 2020 uh, potentially two years back and let's see so these files are uh, usually up updated to the latest one and we can see here it says version 3.6.8 so it looks like it's the latest one without any potential vectors or vulnerabilities that we can get so we're gonna skip this because this is open source software which is potentially protected and also it has the latest version uh, installed so we, let's move on uh, another interesting thing here is this function so I'm gonna copy this function uh, but before that let's see what it's doing uh, you can see that this is not the this is uh, JavaScript but this JavaScript it, uh, this code is obfuscated so one cannot copy this and we can see here uh, this thing is not readable not understood but we can actually read this one it says document get element by id clicked value and then yes so this is enough in order to understand what's going on if you see the page source uh, you can see that there's a script here uh, just let's just see clicked uh, search again yeah there we go we have it here so you can see this uh, input type hidden name the click and id clicked and value is nothing so uh, in order to understand what's going on uh, what i'll do is let's open let's click on ins inspect let's go to the network tab also uh, before that let's see what's ahead so it says console log uh, and whenever i see i see console log it's uh, usually this console that's talking about so there will be a log or we can say that there will be a input here uh, it will say fred i turned on php file syntax highlighting for you to review json okay so what we can do here is you can see that this is a function named handle summit so in order to so we can actually run this function here in using the console so handle submit press enter and we can see the our, our code actually ran and we can see the output here it says fred i turned on pitch files in the selecting for you to review and three dollars then json so it looks like this is a message from json to fred saying this thing okay so he's saying that php file syntax highlighting is on so let's go to google and search for php file syntax uh, highlight oops i misspelled it uh, let's see okay so you can see here we have two functions that is highlight file and highlight string so uh, you can see here the fred said that he has turned on php file syntax highlighting so we're going to take a look at the highlight file function here in the manual of php from their official website and here we can see that uh, it prints out or written the syntax highlighted version of the code contained in the file name that we specify so also it says that many servers are configured to automatically highlight files with phps extension so uh, if we have any file uh, suppose example phps uh, it will be uh, you'll be able to see it in the syntax highlighted form uh, you can see here if server has this uh, setting enabled then uh, we can actually see the syntax highlighted code uh, just by appending the .phps extension after the file name. So with that information, let's try it uh, here. So I'll say index.phps uh, instead of php. And here we can see uh, the syntax highlighted code. Here you can see the php code uh, running this session start. And then it is including another file that is named functions.php. And also including the security image uh, PHP file. Here we can see uh, it says if uh, the user PWD that's password captcha code and clicked and uh, clicked equals to yes, uh, these all uh, are set uh, using the post method, then it will prompt a new uh, captcha code. And here this code uh, checks if the captcha code is equals to what is shown, and if it is not, then uh, captcha error returns to true else if the code if the, if, if the captcha code is shown is correct then it will move on to another condition 
that checks if the valid uh, if the user that you specify is valid and if the password that you specify is valid or not using the is valid pwd function this is a user defined function i guess and also it sets the cookie uh, user to the username that you specify and the password to the correct password that we specify and then we are taken to another location uh, that is mfa.php file so this is basically it here we can see that uh, this function uh, function.php file so let's see if we can browse it function.php uh, here we can see that we ha do have a file but we cannot see it since it is in php form but let's try appending s and see if we can get the syntax highlighted form and we do have it here you can see oops uh, yeah that we, it is including another file that is named config.php here's a function uh, user defined function that is, is valid user uh, that is taking out the user user variable and user variable is bin to hex uh, user uh, this user variable is taken from the user that you specify in the sign in form uh, sign in login page so uh, user equals to the bin to hex so the ascii character that you specify uh, suppose if i type username to be uh, admin then this admin will be converted to hexadecimal format using this uh, function bin to hex and if uh, the hexadecimal form of that user is equals to the login user a login user is a variable then uh, it will return true if this is uh, uh, if this condition satisfies so uh, we can take a look at the config.php if we have the login user i uh, so let's see uh, we, as usual we're gonna append s to see if we can see it and we can see it so define login user so this is the value of the login user so here we can see that uh, this login user is uh, the hexadecimal format so if uh, uh, the hexadecimal value of the user that we specify is equal to the hexadecimal uh, value of the login user value then this user is a valid user same goes for the is valid password uh, there's a little bit difference here we can see uh, well we will get on to this later first of all let's look at this one so we uh, we have the hexadecimal value of the login user we need to convert it to uh, ASCII character uh, back so that we can get the uh, user in order to do that we're gonna use php inside this inside in our local machine so i'll say nano and i'll name it as user.php so let's do the basic stuff php and then first of all we need to search on google that how we can convert it, uh, the bin to x back uh, to the uh, decimal value so in google i'm gonna search uh, to convert x to ascii in php so here we can see it says convert hexadecimal string to string using pack function okay so uh, this is this interesting one let's see so we are given the syntax here of using the pack function and these are the examples so we can just take a look at the examples and copy them and modify the code uh, to get the desired login login user value so let's copy this one and let's see nano user of php paste it here and let's set hex underscore str value to the value of the login user let's paste it here save it and then execute it using php and we can see nothing outputted because uh, we did not say echo so i'll say echo str1 save it run it and we can see the value to be json test account so we can see that this is the value of the username and we can use it to sign in but uh, now we need a password therefore uh, i'll say uh, echo this inside the correct.txt file just to save it all right now let's take a look at the is valid user function and this pwd is taking the password that you input in the sign in page and uh, dollar hash value very variable is set to md5 value of the password that you specify and once we have that uh, hash generated that value will be stored inside the hash and that hash value is being passed on to the substr function well let's search substr function for a better understanding so substr in php 
you can see this is a built-in function in PHP that is used to extract the part of the string and what minus 3 is doing is it is extracting uh, last three characters of the uh, generated hash so for example let's say our hash is uh, just say that our hash is this and if you run this a uh, minus 3 it means minus 3 means 735 suppose if I minus 5 then it would have been 782735 and so this code is checking if uh, the last three uh, characters that are 735 is whether or not it is equal to 001 if it is equal to 001 then it is a valid password so for right now we need to get a password that has hash ending with 001 now this is complex to uh, maybe to understand uh, as you might be new to it but once you get it it's really easy so uh, in order to get a real password we just need to uh, generate the md5 uh, hash of that password of every password and check whether uh, it has its hash ending with 001 or not if that hash is ending with 001 then that is the real password so for that we have to do some scripting here so let's see what i'll do here is i'm gonna make a python script real quick so i'm gonna say nano i'm not gonna name it password pass.py and let's see import hashlib so hashlib is a library uh, for playing with hashes inside python uh, here what i'm doing is i'm going to open the rockyou.txt word list that you have uh, uh, inside kali and i'm gonna uh, take each and every line or you can say each and every word of that word list each and every line and then compute the md5 sum of that specific password and uh, I, I will put f condition inside the script and it will check if that hash is ending with 001 or not if it is ending with 001 then the script will break and we will have the password right away so, so i'll say with uh, in case you are not familiar with the python scripting uh, you can also search this uh, quickly on google also i would like to tell you uh, there's a misconception, especially in the cybersecurity field, that you need to know uh, languages like uh, Python, Bash, Java. Yes, uh, you need to know, but uh, a little or no knowledge is absolutely okay. As per my experience, you just need to know the basic syntax of Python, of using the uh, hash, of using loops, and uh, of, of the syntaxes, and how to construct sentences in Python. The basic knowledge is all you need. Rest rest information you can get on stack overflow google is your best friend research and you have the answer in the front of your screen so i'm gonna uh, let's uh, uh, make this script using google only i'm not gonna do, gonna do anything so let's uh, assume that you are completely newbie in python scripting and how are you going to do it so uh, let's see what is our aim here so first off we need to open the rocky.txt word list and get each and every password of that in our python file so let's do that i'm gonna say uh, open file with python or specifically let's say open lines or say read lines in a file with python here you can see we have read a file line by line in python and also we have the stack overflow the best website in the world and Let's see the stack overflow first. Here we can see this code will uh, read the entire file into memory. So let's copy this. So with open file name as file, I will just specify the file name here. So the file name is uh, user share world list rockyou.txt. So I'm gonna just uh, uh, verify the location of the word list. You share word list to rock you. Yeah, this is indeed it. Okay, as file and press tab here for the indentation. Here you can see you can use this one for line in file. Uh, we can say print line dot r strip. So for line in file, now this is taking every line. And what you want to do is print that line. Yeah, that's it basically. Let's see if this is working or not. So I'll say Python 3 pass.py and i press ctrl c because this is a long list so you can see that this is working and we have the password uh, getting printed one by one but one thing you can notice here is uh, there's a space here 
and this should not be the case because when you are computing md5 sum what happens is it takes this value and also the new line value and which makes the hash different which should not happen so in order to fix this uh, we have to strip it uh, the value by one so uh, again uh, we need to search this on google so i'll say oops uh, yeah remove new lines in python here we have it it's saying remove new line from string in python also so on stack overflow saying python stripped uh, slash n so let's check out these two it says that our strip function is used to remove a new line character from a string in python so let's see if this is working or not so i'll copy this out of strip and what i'm gonna do is i'll say word equals to line dot r strip oops and once so word has the character stored inside and we will print that word let's try running it and we can see that the new line has been removed and everything is going as expected okay so we are going good okay let's move on yeah so we have the word here let's remove it okay so we are reading every uh, every line in the file now we need to compute the md5 hash so now i'm going to search on google that how we can compute the md5 hash using python so i'll say md5 hash using python here we have the md5 hash in python and also of stack overflow how to get md5 sum of a string using python okay so this is the python tree code to demonstrate the working of md5 hash and you can see that this is the string which is being uh, first of all encoded using the hashlib in uh, library and then it is being printed here and the output you can see the hash here md5 hash so uh, let's quickly copy this we will edit it and let's paste it here let's make it a little bit clean and here str2.hash is not what we need because it's word according uh, to our script so word is going to be encoded uh, using the hash md 5 function and the value will be stored in the result and then this result will be printed using the hex digest function which generates the md5 hash so let's check this out if this is working or not so python 3 password pi and we can see the hexadecimal equivalent of hash is this so it looks like uh, it's working pretty fine and in order to uh, confirm whether the md5 hashes that are being generated are real or not what we can do is let's see the first value that is stored inside the raw qr list so i'm gonna say let's user share word list raw q and here we can see the first and our word is one two three four five six let's copy this and then we can just open cyberchef here in order to compute the real md5 hash paste it here and then search for md5 select this and we have the md5 sum here let's verify if this is equal to what is our uh, python script generating so i'll say python 3 password pi i'm gonna say head to only uh, output uh, 10 results and then we can see this is the hash generating of 12356 using a python script that, it, that it starts with e10 and it's with 883e and you can see it starts with e10 and it's with 883e that confirms uh, that uh, our python script is working really fine okay perfect now we just need to specify a condition uh, that will break the loop once it finds the hash that has the value equal to 001 and for that i'm gonna say if before that we need to extract the last three characters of the hash generated for that again we're gonna use google and uh, we will say extract last three words in a string using python here let's scroll down and it says print the last two words in a sentence no this is not what we need yeah this is what we need it says how to get last n characters in a string so get last four characters of a string in python using negative indexes 
this is a code used uh, to generate the last uh, three characters of the sample str that is sample string so let's paste this here last characters equals to sample str instead of sample str we're going to say uh, we need to name our hash something so i'm going, not going to print the hash instead i'll say hash equals to result dot hex digest and uh, then we, we will print this hash and uh, here i'll say i'll name it hash oops because our hash is stored inside the hash and extract the last three characters from that value and once we have this those values stored in the last characters we're going to specify the condition here so if last ch if last characters equals to equals to uh, 001 i'm going to say uh, break the loop and before breaking the loop we also need to know the value of the password the value of the real value of the hash generated for that i'll say print word because this, uh, this, this is the word generated using uh, rocky so let's run it and this should work fine let's see here we have it uh, the hash ending with 001 and that value is valid Ray, we actually did it using just google and here now we have the username password everything we have it so now uh, uh, let's just uh, paste this inside of our credits file so i say credit.txt let's see the credits we have json text test account and wallet so wallet sign in and we are in also we can see it says our four digit code has been sent to your device okay so we now we need a four digit code okay so let's check out the page source again we can see a function named handle submit here this should be like the previous one so i will execute it using the console and here we can see a note to the thread again that says we need to put some brute force protection on here so uh, this hints us that for the brute force thing so if you say 0000, zero, zero, zero uh, before that i'll inspect and go to the network tab to capture the request and submit and we can see the post request generated here and here i'm going to go to copy and then copy as curl clear this out paste it in here and we have the curl request and then the data here also of code equals to 0000, zero, zero, zero. Here we need to fuzz the values from 0000 to 9999 to get to know the real password or the real uh, code in use. Here I'm going to say dash d. Why did I do it to dash d? Because I'm going to use the fuff tool and fuff tool says uh, to use a dash d flag uh, for the post data. Uh, and I'm using dash h for the every header in use. I'm going to remove the compressed this because this is not a valid flag for fuff tool also this is the url so dash u and then dash w to specify the word list so user share set list then discovery i guess or maybe it's fuzzing let's go to fuzzing and here you can see four digit zero zero uh, two nine nine dot txt file so this is the file that we're going to use and then press enter oops uh control c you can see every invalid request is making uh, a response back of size 153 with words 123 and lines 24 so we are searching for the correct password and uh, once we have that correct code uh, the server will, will respond or it will take us to another page that will not have the size or words same as 183 so what i'm going to do is filter uh, the words 183 so it will remove every uh, output that is generating words 183 and only gonna show us the unique one and here we can see 2683 has words 0 size 0 and as you can see status 302 uh, which is a redirect so it looks like we found the real one so let's paste it in here press submit and we are in 
Here you can see the file browser and the file viewer. So if we enter any file path, click on submit. You can see that we can see the contents of the root folder. Uh, let's see if we can uh, see what's inside the home folder. And you can see we have two users, Fred and Jason. And this file viewer is to uh, view the specific files like etc password file. You press enter and we can see the etc password file here. Okay, so uh, let's see what was inside the home folder. We can see two users, Fred and Jason. So let's see what contents we have inside Fred user. Uh, you can see there's nothing interesting. And let's check out the JSON folder. And we can see that we have SSH keys generated for the JSON user. So let's see if we can get those SSH keys and get into the SSH. So dot SSH and we can see here it says fail to open directory, no such file or directory. Oh, because I specified the wrong username, JSON. Press enter and we can see it has IDRSA. Well, it does have so. Okay, so we now we need to use the file viewer in order to see the IDRSA. And we have it here. Perfect. And also you can see it says uh, begin RSA private key encrypted. So this file is encrypted with a password and we, we have to crack it. So we will do that with the help of ssh to johnpy python script. So before that, let's copy this uh, IDRSA. Let's paste it here. And then let's use ssh to john to specify the encrypted file and then output the contents of it to hash.txt. Okay, so what ssh to john did was it generated a hash uh, that can be used by uh, john, the ripper tool, in order to crack the password for this IDRSA file. Uh, you can also see the contents of the hash.txt file here. So let's launch the john using the wordlist doc queue and press enter. You can see it says no password hash is left to crack. Uh, actually, I have already cracked this password, so John does not. Yeah, so John does not output the already cracked password. Once you crack it, the password is 182b3c4d. So once knowing the password, uh, we can try to log into SSH using JSON user. So before that, we need to give uh, special permissions to IDRSA file. And then let's see, SSH SI ID underscore RSA, then JSON, enter it, the IP of the machine that is 10, 10, 1, 2, 1, 5. 5, press enter, type yes, then 182B3C4D, and then we are in. Perfect. And also we have the user text file here. Once the, inside the user, uh, I always go for the sudo dash l to see if we can run any command using if we can if we can run any command as root and here we can see that we can run every command as root but for that we need to know the password of the json user before running uh, any command so if we try sudo su it will ask for the password of json and we can try password uh, that we found recently that it's 182b3c4d and you can see it says that it's a wrong password also, we can try password violet that you found before uh, and it says it's a wrong password and so we do not have the password of JSON. Here we can see it also says Fred no password or what this means is we can run any command using Fred without any uh, password. So I'll say sudo su Fred uh, sorry I'll say sudo and then dash u to specify uh, the username that you want to execute the command as. So I'm going to execute as Fred and what I'm going to execute is bash press enter and we are in this box as Fred now so let's clear this so let's go and check out what let's see what we uh, command we can run as Fred using so sudo dash l and here it says that we can uh, run this command as root without any password Perfect. So we can run bin systemctl restart fail to ban. Okay. So actually, we uh, this fail to ban is a service uh, that protects your server from uh, SSH brute force. This tool is uh, basically used to protect your server from brute force attacks. After a number of or several number of attempts of incorrect password, the IP will be automatically blocked from making further request, and which makes brute force impossible. Here we can see that we can restart the service. So let's 
quickly go and search on Google if there's any exploit available. So I'll say fail to ban privesk. Here we can see previous escalation via fail to ban. This is what we need. So let's check this out. And this is basically a write up telling you how you can set this thing up and how you can uh, use this, exploit this to get root on the machine. And it says that uh, inside at C fail to ban folder, if you have uh, write permissions to action.d, then you can execute any command as root. So let's see. I'm gonna say cd at C fail to ban. And let's see, action.d is owned by root and also it is writable by anyone so let's see into it uh, let's follow the article here it says if you look closely at the ip tables uh, multi port conf file you can actually execute any command that you need so let's see let's open this thing in nano and here if you scroll down you can see action ban and here you can specify any other command that you want to execute it will be executed as root once a user is banned from as making further request uh, let's say execute chmod but before trying this out you should always check if this fail to ban service is running as root or not so uh, because you will just escalate it to the user uh, that is running this fail to ban service so let's see if uh, the service is running as root so we can get the root in this machine so let's see here we can see and the root user is running the user bin fail to ban server here so yeah this is confirms that we can use this to escalate actually okay so let's continue what we were doing so actually we can uh, go to reverse shell cheat sheet here and we can use any uh, reverse shell payload here I'm not going to go for the bash this time actually I can but uh, this sometimes fails so let's skip that uh, we can actually do the python one or the netcat one like this one so uh, before that let's just confirm if netcat is installed on the box so I'll say which nc it says bin nc and it confirms that it is installed on the box so I'm gonna copy this payload let's press it here and specify a try hack me up here this 10 point 17.1.253 and then port 1234. Let's open that key listener port 1234 to catch the reverse shell and then save it. Okay, now we need to actually restart the service so that the configuration file that we just uh, uh, updated uh, will be refreshed and updated and will be implemented. And so let's say sudo this and then the, you can see the service has restarted. Now, in order to explore this, you need to make invalid SSH attempts uh, on the server. So I'll log in as JSON 1010.132.105. Now I'm going to make invalid attempts. So I'm going to just say enter, enter, enter. And then you can see permission denied. Then again, I want to try it. And press enter again. and and we have it now if i try to make our attempts you can see it says connection refused because i have been banned and that command executed when i was banned and we are as root inside the machine so now we can go to root and fetch that root flag real quick and we can see it is right here so uh thank you for watching if anything was not understood by you or i was unable to explain i apologize because everyone is a beginner and i also make mistakes also uh, to, I am making this video at night when it's almost 11 or 12 o'clock or at, at, at most 1 o'clock and I may not speak fluently uh, because uh, my parents are sleeping nearby. I try to make uh, videos, quality videos as much as I can. Rest my apologies if there was any mistake. As usual you can connect to me uh, on discord and yeah thank you for watching. See you next time.